In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the structure tree, the options and properties menus in DesignSpark Mechanical. In our last video, we finished modeling this PVC coupler. It is a nice, simple design for us to start with for explaining the structure tree, so let's start there. So in the upper section we see the structure tree and there's a little triangle at the very top and what that gives you is the ability to collapse and expand any of the components that are underneath that. So we'll see that over and over again. So simply by clicking on it you can see that it expands or uh, collapses the structure tree. The next feature is the little check boxes and you can see if we click on those it actually hides or shows the components as we select or deselect them. Now that we have changed something in the design by turning it off, you'll notice that a little asterisk appeared beside the name and also if you go down to the bottom tab a little asterisk showed up beside the name in the tab as well. So what this is showing you is that there are unsaved changes made to this design. So we need to keep that in mind anytime that you're working in a design if you have a little asterisk there that means that there's something that you've changed and it hasn't been saved yet. So let's turn this back on and as you see this is a very simple design there's only one solid under the component so uh, let's go ahead and start ourselves a new design and we need to start a sketch so let's put some components in here so let's do a couple lines here and we'll do a circle and let's do an arc now as you see over in the structure tree uh, it added a little folder here uh, but it doesn't show any of the components but it has that little drop down feature so if we expand that then we can see each of the components that are in our sketch so you can notice as, as we hover over them uh, it will highlight each of these components uh, in the sketch itself over here and vice versa if we hover over it in the sketch we can see that it highlights it over in the structure tree so this is an alternate way as you're working in your sketches to actually click on and select items uh, in your design to edit or manipulate and along with any of the others you know the, the shift will allow you to select them all as you go down through or um, escape to get away from them or if I do a control I can select them one at a time and turn them on and off with the uh, control and click feature right now as we've talked about before once you go from the sketch mode into the 3d mode any enclosed loops will then become a surface and you'll see that reflected here now in the structure tree is that now that we've gone into the 3d mode it now has created a surface so again we can select the components from the structure tree or in the design itself <clears throat> so if we click on the surface then it selects that surface and let's go ahead and pull this into a component here real quick now that that has made a 3D shape, that makes it into a solid. And you see that that is reflected in our structure tree again. So now it changed that surface into a solid shape. And once again, we can tell it to hide or show different components in our design by clicking on the little boxes to show or hide components. So let's turn everything back on here. The next item I want to introduce is components. So just like when you're working with files and folders, you need to select the placement of where you want to put a new file. Well, the same thing goes for adding components. So if we select the design tab, the heading clear up at the top, and we right click, we get the drop down menu and you can see there's a new component. By adding that in, that just added a new component into our design. You can change the name here. I'm going to leave it as component one. And the first thing that you'll notice is that component one is now bold. 
This is how it indicates which component is active, meaning which one you are making changes to. So now that component one is highlit, I can go back and start a new sketch and we can add some new components to this. Do a line. And let's add another arc. And then once we go to our 3D mode again, we'll see that now component one has surface and has curves. And if we do the drop down there, once again, we can select each of these individual items. And anything that we put in after this component one was highlighted is now added to that component. So basically, components are an easy way to organize all of the parts of your design. So once I have items in one component, I can turn everything in that component on or off by making it visible, collapsing it, expanding it. Everything works in that one component. For organizational purposes, you can also change where components live in your design. So for instance, let's say I want these two lines right here to actually be not in the overall design, but I want to shift them to the, the new component one. You can select them and can drag and drop them into a new component so then it changes which component those items are in. So you see now they've become a part of component number one. So now that component one is the active component, if we wanted to change which component we're working in, then it's a simple matter of clicking on which component you want to work in, right clicking, and making it the active component. So let's add another new component here, and it's called component two. It is the active component that we're working in. If we wanted to go back and work in component number one, we could select it and tell it this is the active component. Also remember if we expand items, we can move items from one component to another by simply selecting them, clicking, dragging, and letting them go. So that moved all of those lines into our new component. The middle section where it says properties on the left hand side is merely a place where it shows you the properties of the component that you're working on. So this really only works for solids. So if I select a solid here, it will tell you the appearance, what color it is, uh, what material if you have that selected. The property section I, I generally do not use while I'm do doing designs. Uh, the only time I really ever use that is to change colors of components so that they look a little bit different inside the user interface. The bottom section, however, is the options section, and that is very useful to us during the design. You may have noticed when we are in the sketch mode that depending on which tool we are using, the bottom section over here changes quite dramatically. So this is where you're going to find the options for each of the tools that we're using, whether it's in sketch mode or in the 3D mode using the pull tool, move tools, all of that. So let me show you that real quick. The first thing that I really want to show you is that the option for snapping to grid is right here in the options uh, section. So you can either turn that off completely so that it is normally off, or you can turn that on where it's normally on. And remember, when you are actually doing designs, if it is in the snap mode, it snaps to grid, but you can hold the shift key down and you see it reflected over here that shift temporarily disables the snap to grid. As I hold the shift, it's gone, there it's on, right? So, and this works in either direction. So now it is in, normally in the snap mode. So it is snapping to the grid. If I select this off, it is not in the snap mode, but I can hit the shift again and then it will jump back to the grid to make it easier to align and make things perfectly straight or to uh, incremental uh, steps. We'll see the same thing reflected when we go to the 3D mode and we select some of the tools there, like the pull tool. 
then the options section shows you the options that are available for that pull tool. Same thing for move, for fill. All of the tools as we're using them, their options are going to be showing up over in this options section of the uh, user interface. Each of the options for each of the tools are going to be explained in more detail in the appropriate video for that tool. In this sample design that we've just started, we just have a bunch of random components drawn in here. But I wanted to show you real quick if I open up uh, one of my previous designs that's a little more complicated. In the structure tree, if I pull this down a little ways, you can see that there's a lot more components in here. And this is a good example of how you can organize the design and be able to turn items on and off within the design so that you can see what you're wanting to look at. So in this case here I have a generator that I'm building and uh, I have two leveling legs that are uh, trailer jacks. One of them I have um, the clearance for the handle uh, drawn in and the other one I have it off and that was just a simple matter of in my leveling system I can expand it I can go to each of these jacks. This is the jack that it's turned off. Here's the jack that it's turned on. If I wanted to turn that on, I can expand it and go down and then see the clearance for both the handle itself and then additional clearance for your hand as you're cranking it. You can go through and turn individual components on or off, like for this example I'll show you um, the batteries I had an optional location that I was considering trying to place the batteries in this design and I decided that would be a little too cumbersome to try and put the batteries in that location uh, but I didn't want to discount it altogether so I just made another copy of the batteries put them in made a bracket and decided that this other location was better So you can simply turn items on and off and be looking at individual components throughout your design and you can organize them into groups and expand and uh, show hide. There's so many features that you can do in the structure tree that really helps you during the design to be able to focus on individual components or groups of components in your design. There are so many additional tips that I can show you. I don't want to get sidetracked during this part, um, but there are so many ways that you can use images uh, to make your design better. Like this one, I used an image for this outlet on this welder to show where the cables are getting plugged in. These are all tips and tricks I'll be showing in later videos. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to show you the structure tree and how you use it during design phase. If you have figured out by now that I am importing other files into my designs using this file button, let me give you one word of caution. You can import files into any of your design if you have previously saved them in DesignSpark. And I just want to give you a word of caution that if you import a part into your design, be very careful because editing it in your new design will go back and also edit the original part if you don't set it up correctly. I am doing a video specifically on using files and making assemblies in DesignSpark. I just wanted to give you a word of advice that be very careful on editing parts once you have them changed in your design. So there's our introduction to the structure tree, the properties and the options sections of the user interface. So hopefully you can see these are very powerful tools that we will be using during modeling our parts in DesignSpark Mechanical. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so that you're updated with all of my future videos.